Yeah. Whereas you guys have been sounding the alarm, you have people, well-known people like Francis Chan, who in his latest book wrote exactly on the subject and actually was encouraging the sheep in with the wolves and many of the people that we've just been speaking about and to all get along nicely. Where do Christians have to draw the line when it comes to unity? And why is it that truth at any cost is over unity at any cost? Yeah, I was I was just looking at Francis Chan's book uh, last night, Until Unity, it's called. And I haven't read it yet, um, but I I plan to. And I, I am I have seen videos he has done with NAR leaders like Bill Johnson, where he has apologized to them for saying that he had viewed them maybe as false teachers. And um, and so he has part of his unity that he's calling for in this book includes unity with these NAR leaders. Um, and the thing is, you know, what, what we're trying to show is the errors in NAR, you know, we're not calling them heresy. We're not saying they write, you know, they would put you outside the Christian faith, but we, they're not just minor non-important errors either. The the teachings in NAR are aberrant. They're serious doctrinal error that is causing people to shipwreck their faith. It's, it's splitting families. It's splitting churches. It's causing people to have severe disillusionment with their faith and even abandon it. So, uh, uh, so um, the thing about his book is it's called Until Unity. But if you read, it's from Ephesians 4. Uh, he gets that from Ephesians 4, um, 13. And, and I wanted to read just those the, the context of that because he leaves out something important. You know, the title does not reflect the full context here. It's And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather speaking the truth and love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint. And it goes on, which, it, you know, it's equipped. But my point is that the unity, uh, that the title of his book, Until Unity, comes from that passage. But if you read that in context, it's a unity of the faith. It's first and foremost a doctrinal unity. And it's supposed to keep us from being carried around by every wave and wind of doctrine, like the ones we're talking about in the New Apostolic Reformation movement. And so... Um, uh, I think it's important too to realize that you know we we are we talk about this verse Romans sixteen seventeen in our book where Paul appeals to the Roman Christians. He says, "I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them." You know, and when it's 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 the uh, NAR leaders who are putting these bringing forth these doctrines that are putting these obstacles in people's way contrary to what we have been taught, what the apostles have taught us. And um, so they're actually the ones causing division, you know, not us. So that that's um, important to realize.